Today's speaker is originally from California. Uh, in 1983 to 86, she served as a correctional officer at Sierra Conservation Center in California. 2015 to 2021, art instructor and site coordinator at the state of California prison. A past board member of the Central Sierra Arts Council there in California. <coughs> and lastly, Stacy's one of our own, an esteemed member of our own Arts Council here. Please, a big cheers to welcome for our station. <laughs> Thank you so much for being here. I really appreciate it. I feel the love, which is very important to me because, um, yeah, I mean, I, I, I know a lot of people here, which is wonderful, makes it much so much easier. And, um, and thank you for coming on this beautiful, um, Sunday afternoon with a little bit of wind out there, but um, anyway, um, I, I do want to say um, I'm super glad to be in TRC and, um, and it's, uh, our life stories are very interesting. I'm just going to read this quick little um, uh, bio so it'll just make it easier because some people don't quite understand abstract art. And my work comes from a very personal um, space. I usually are uh, definitely um, deal with my emotions and through my art. And so, um, and um, so I'll just read this uh, quickly and then we'll move on. Um, I grew up in a military family, which uh, enabled me to move around a lot. Um, this included around the United States. I got to live in Portugal. I got to live in Iran. I actually graduated from Tehran American School in 1976. Um, I'm very thankful for that opportunity to travel a lot. My parents were love, like love to travel and go to museums, so I was very blessed. Um, and this did have a major impact on my life, opening my eyes to different cultures and aesthetics. And um, I also worked at a California state prison, um, which is a totally opposite <laughs> place to work than traveling around the world. Um, and, um, and I was the, uh, I ran an arts and corrections program for uh, more than 20 years um, until it was all cut uh, through budgets. Um, as an artist, I approach my work intuitively, allowing my imagination um, and the painting process to kind of help me move along and guide me. My abstract shapes function as symbols, evoking people or cultures, along with my, I have a very old, old color palette. Um, I find structure onto which I can allow my emotions to reside, and I thread my forms and feelings throughout the paintings, weaving all the parts together. I believe we were we are all interrelated through energy, vibration, light, frequency, like ripples in the water. We are all connected. So I feel very connected to all of you here, and, and thank you for very much. So first slide. And I, I do want to I do want to thank the, the um, Sierra County Arts Council for um, you know. Thanks. Sponsoring this and also Rio Bravo. So I'm very uh, grateful that they do this. Oh, yeah, lights. Lights. Uh, all the way. All, it, all the way. Is there another? There we go. There we go. Oh. Yeah, much better. Thank you. Oh, we're tired. Okay. Art is food for the soul. I really truly believe really this. Um, I went to Humboldt State University and I studied drawing, painting, printmaking, and papermaking. Uh, these are the artists that have, um, I would say, definitely inspired me. Um, the Pre Raphaelites, Van Gogh, Francis Bacon. I was very lucky to see some of uh, Hieronymus Bosch's work in Portugal. Um, and also Louise Nevelson, who I got to meet in Iran. Mm. And this is a self-portrait I did at 18. And that was at Humboldt State. Next. And these are my creatures. <laughs> <laughs> and more. Um, this is after living in Iran. I think I had some angst to let go. <laughs> it, it was hard to be a teenager 
of a fiend, a woman in Iran at the time. But it wouldn't be much worse now. I do have a story about the horse, just real briefly. When I lived in Portugal, I was 11 years old, and I started doing horseback riding lessons. And the stable I went, the lady who was British and was teaching us, she didn't own the place, but she just had her horses, you know, for us to ride. Well, this other gentleman, two of them, had this gorgeous horse, and they were being horrendous to it. And they were whipping it, and the horse took off. It went over the corral, it jumped over a car, it jumped over the big, huge six, six foot fence and went running down the road. And that's what I remember. Just other kinds of angst. <laughs> and then I got into, this is lithography, um, printmaking um, at Humboldt and, you know, painting, printmaking, I went back and forth. It became much more tight because um, you're drawing on a lime, piece of limestone. It's wonderful to draw. Next. And this is a, um, a prismacolor yeah, drawing. This is a lithographic color little construction. Oh, and this is another little story. Um, I, Arcata has some characters just like here. And um, there was this fellow that always wore purple, and he, he was, I think they called him the Purple Man. He put up a, um, he put up a sign that saying that he was going to rent out a place. So, um, and, and uh, my prior partner, uh, Sherman, and I went out to see it. We didn't even have a car at the time. And it was out. It was out in the woods. We had to borrow somebody's car. And when we got there, it was a two by four constructed building all wrapped in plastic. There were no walls. And it was just like, oh wow. So this is this is the glass house or the plastic house. Just more this is a watercolor. A watercolor and a monoprint. I just love doing monoprints. They're fun. Handmade paper and collage explorations while I was still at Humboldt State. We got it, it was a big thing back then in the, in the late 70s, early 80s, uh, paper making. And so I got into doing collage. This is somewhat on that same, it's a similar uh, composition that was on the last uh, couple slides ago. More paper collages, handy paper collages. I like to cut up my prints. Next. <laughs> and these were just uh, handmade paper. They could be, and then yeah, they're, uh, yeah, very interesting. They're fun. Lots of strain, pigmented paper. And then this one's called seepage. I was in fire. And this is just a detail. Next. And I graduated in 1981 with a BA degree in Creative Arts and Humanities. And I married uh, Sherman Hay, who ended up being my partner for almost 40 years until he passed away. So I became a stepmom. He already had three children prior to me marrying him. And I was very young and naive. And um, and then we moved to the Sierras, uh, the foothills of the Sierras of California, which is a beautiful area, and that's where his family was kind of based at the time. And so that's why we moved there. And, um, and then he was lucky to get this job at the state prison teaching art classes, and I started volunteering there. I never thought it would actually work there. Um, and I remember when this lieutenant said, why don't you, do you want to work here? And I'm going, hell no. I don't want to work here, but I ended up working there because I, I don't like being a starving artist. I just don't. I like, I like having a, a real income coming every month. I couldn't, I couldn't deal with it. I started reading a lot of romance novels, <laughs> and, and that was.
was um, a signal that, that I, I needed to have a, a real income and not being worried if I was going to be able to eat the next day. Um, and so um, I did. I went and applied. Because of that, I went to the prison and I became a correctional officer for a couple of years. I know how to shoot a gun. And, uh, you know, not that I, you know, anyway. Um, and, and spray pepper spray and whatever. Um, and it was um, a, kind of a crazy time within the Department of Corrections at that time. Uh, it was expanding astronomically. When I first started in 1984, working as a correctional officer, there were only 12 prisons. When I retired in 2009, there were 35 massive prisons in California. We were locking up an incredible amount of people. And I had a job because of it, but um, it was kind of insane. Anyway, so I was very, very lucky uh, to be the director of the arts program at Sierra Conservation Center. And it was called that because we also had 20 prisons that taught inmates how to be firefighters. Um, and so it was the whole gamut. We had lots of different yards, three different yards, and I coordinated the program for all of them. And, and the camps too. So next, model type printing. I did a lot of printing at the prison. And I will say it was very fun. We used to call it monomania because it was, we would just get out the inks and we would print for days. And it was, it was fabulous. Next, I'm texting people. Just abstracts. And I just really enjoyed doing them. Next. Uh, two feathers um, that flock together, or two what is it, birds that flock together, and then also space the final frontier. You know. A lot of, um, I, I, I'm starting to use a lot of textures, probably more for being in the prison, looking like wire, being bound up. <laughs> and this is, um, I just wanted to show you the difference between, like actually this is the uh, monoprint and then you have the ghost print. I don't even have the original one there, but these are, this is the third print off of the same. And you just rearrange it and have a lot of fun. <coughs> and this is the shadow nose and feather toss, just small monoprints. Next. This one is uh, California has a lot of droughts, so I was thinking I'm not so much a, you know, that's called a, a rain dance. I was really wanting to just have some rain. When you're in a drought and you feel like if you sneeze you might fight or have a fire, you just want rain. And uh, this one is actually um, Twisted in Pain, the prize, which is very sad because my, my little stepson has been in prison almost his whole life. Uh, he had mental health issues. He, they were, he, he was the worst of what the Department of Corrections could do at the time in the whole system. And he was a sentence as an adult, but he should never have been. And um, it's very sad. Yeah, and he's still in prison. So, anyway, um, next, just uh, king and queen, and so I did a variation on that. I loved riding horses, and so that's why I have the next um, pieces of my horses that I, and these are all mono prints where you cut out all the little, um, oh, what are they called? <laughs> I can't think of right now. Um, <laughs> But you cut out lots of little things and stick them on, you know, in come up and, and, um, and go back and work on them too. That's what I like to do. Next. Uh, this is, of course, inspired by the prison. Um, and also, uh, my uh, prior husband, Sherman, um, he uh, was a Vietnam veteran. And so I always felt that he, he talked about the monkey on his back. And that was part of it. Um, and, uh, and the... And the and the prison cells are pretty small. Yeah. Uh, this is my friend, Violet, and this was her family portrait that I did for her. <laughs> she was a co-worker at the prison, and she was lovely. And she had two kids. Yeah. Uh, just more, more monoprints. I just, uh, it was a time I really didn't have the energy and time to do much painting, 
but I would like to. So monoprints were my way of expressing myself in a very fast, quick, um, oh, easy uh, way. More windows, more doors, more, you know, I started getting into the windows to another realm. So uh, slippers of hope. This is the first one is uh, just a regular uh, linoleum block. The second one is actually on handmade paper. I did a lot of printing on paper. Uh, this is uh, wrapped, trapped, and unraveling. I will say I had three step kids, my own two kids, my husband working full time in a prison and spending more time with them than I am with my own family. It gets to you. And just more linoleum block. Um, that one was in, in Afghanistan, the middle one. It was very, I did go, I, I was very lucky to go to Afghanistan and travel there a couple times. Um, and um, the women always in the cities always had to wear, be covered. And all they had was a little uh, crocheted area for their eyes to be able to see. Otherwise, they're covered up. A lot of hearts, broken hearts, yeah, um, and, took in, and just dealing with life. <laughs> and at the prison, there are a lot of broken hearts. It's very, can be a very sad place to work. Mm -hmm. what, what they do and what's been done to them. So, yeah, more hard, more hard things and spirals and out of control. I also did a lot of things at the prison. This would be, um, did a lot of public art projects. I didn't, I don't have very many. A lot of my things are on slides and I never had them digitalized. And so we had a lot of mosaic tiles we did for elementary schools. The guys loved doing that. We did a uh, winter project for the Sonora uh, City. Uh, we did uh, 10 posters of Smokey the Bear and all fire. Um, it was for the Department of Agriculture and Forestry, where they would go into local elementary schools and te teach fire safety. And it's very interesting how everybody has a different smoking the bear. Mm -hmm. Because some are really off. You know, for the guys that are, that are doing, you know, painting them, they're really buff, and then other ones are like, really skinny and, you know, maybe like a drug addict. <laughs> you know, so it was, it was very interesting. So yeah, anyway, well, the, the first five are just mosaics. This is our first one. It has a lot to be desired, but it went to Jamestown Elementary School. It's uh, five by nine feet. Next. This was at uh, Soulsbyville. It was a falcon was their um, symbol for school. And also the same size. These are all uh, five by nine. Uh, dragon for Chinese camp elementary school. Chinese, we actually in California, uh, there were a lot of Chinese there. The Chinese campus actually had 5,000 people. Now it's maybe 100. Um, and Mark Twain for Mark Twain Elementary. And then this is the Cougar uh, for uh, Copperopolis Elementary. So those were just some of the things we did. And the next slide is about uh, murals. We did a lot of uh, panel murals, four by eight feet, that we did in the, for the visiting center, so the, uh, at the prison, so that when families come, they were based on Aesop fables and other stories. This was a Native American story. And um, yeah, we did that for, to bring a little bit of life and color and something for the uh, people to talk about at the, in the visiting rooms. Next. Oh, yeah. And then I did some handmade books. I only have a few. They're all packed up. I have nowhere. I have no idea where things are. <laughs> I'm still packed. We haven't unpacked yet. And so I don't know where my other books are. Um, and I have a lot more, but I don't have pictures of them. So yeah, these are just mono prints uh, put into the covers. And we had wonderful people come in and teach. Um, we had a lot of wonderful artists come in. We actually were able to pay them. We actually had a budget. Um, this was, uh, that one is a um, whole bound book of a whole bunch of mono prints and poetry that we got, that the uh, incarcerated people did. And it's actually, there's a copy at the Library of Congress. So, 
and that was Beth Beeling teaching it, and also later on it was uh, Heidi Perini. They were both wonderful bookbinders. And we sold a lot of them at uh, events for raising money for child abuse prevention. So, next. I also did a little bit of sand, uh, ceramics. Uh, this is just a little, this is my brain dance again, but I did it in ceramics. And bring on the rain, um, and then a quail and feathers. Next. Um, yeah, I can't remember. Anyway, um, it's painting and painting. <laughs> And these are some of the paintings, as you can tell. I was working at a prison, and, um, and um, there's a lot of uh, tunnel vision. And this is, um, yeah, you know, dancing. Yeah, you know, like a lot of a lot of issues uh, going on. And I do love perspective. I really do love to. To, to work on perspective. And that's probably because I, yeah, maybe I'll be a 3D person someday. Um, wrapped a faceless angel. I really felt sometimes I had no voice, no hearing, no, you know. Um, I, we can only do so much. Mm. Um, and yeah, wrapped and trapped. Um, yeah, and they're all very personal. You would never think that each one of those flowers is one of my kids. You know, things like that. I mean, that's what just goes on in my brain. Um, and and uh, the woman has turned to stone. Um, and and the scales of justice. And of course, you know, a vulture. <laughs> So those, these two last ones, I had started before our program was totally cut. I mean, we had a fabulous program. We had music, and we had uh, theater, and we had literary arts, we had poets coming in, we had lots of things. Well, that all got cut when we, we went to war in Iraq and the 2008 crash. All those things. I actually got my pink slip at the prison, and so, I had started these two paintings and then I couldn't finish them because I had to switch to being a correctional counselor, which you read a lot of negativity all day long and you're you're actually a peace officer, you're finding you're trying to find out if this person is gonna go to camp or not, or or you're doing a board report uh, to go to the uh, governor's office. I mean there's just a lot of analytical stuff that you have to do. And so I didn't finish these until after I retired. So seven years I did that so that I could get my retirement from the state of California. So after 26 years, and then my brain was full of crap. You know? <laughs> I mean, really, it was overwhelming all the things you have to know to be. It's actually a two year, um, Oh, what you, the probation period, because there's so much stuff you have to know. And so, anyway, that's what my brain was full of. Keep next. <laughs> and I also had made monoprints during that time that I wasn't necessarily happy with, the final product. So I ended up cutting them up. It was really great. And um, used them for my collages. My beetle series. I don't know, I heard that there was like a billion beetles in a square acre, or I don't know, it was some outrageous thing. So I got into doing beetles, because um, they will out-survive all of us. And so there's a lot of collage. This is after I retired, I got to just let go of um, lots of different, yeah, just cutting things up and pacing them down. So I really enjoyed this series. You got rid of your walls. Yeah. Walls, prison walls. That's right. You're right. <laughs> <laughs> and then I had my time zone series, paint and collage. That was fun. I've been, you know, I'm getting more. Yeah. Um, I don't necessarily like to have glass in front of things. I sometimes 
you know, being a mono printer or a printer, you're always putting thin glass over it. And now, uh, I don't like, I don't like the glass. It's like a step in between. So, yeah. So these are just guys. Walk on water. I don't think I can do that. <laughs> But I enjoy it. And this is how I'll start something, just sketching, bring it out, and then I cut it out uh, out of a nice thick paper and, and, uh, um, and, and use it for, as a, in my photo prints. So this is like the first one is the first one, second one, and the third one. So you can, you can get like three out of the, a print. And then you just rearrange it. And, and then I go back and work on it with a colored pencil or or watercolor acrylic. And then I started doing more of the windows, and yeah, these are all windows, and bars, still working it out. <laughs> and um, yeah, so these are, I kind of think of them as windows to, I, to another realm. Um, I started getting into windows at the prison because they have lots of different kinds of windows and usually now they're just all very like four inches wide and maybe six feet long. Mm -hmm. But anyway, I morphed it. And, um, and because the prison is another realm, it's like its own universe. Um, that's where I, yeah. And so I started using it in my artwork. It's another realm. And this was my, actually it took several years to do. I did a portrait. It's kind of me, but it's also that I survived working there. I felt that that was really important. And I, if you look at my sketch, there are lots of words, lots of things that were um, a lot of acronyms within the department, a lot of awful, you know, it was industrial. Uh, you know, they're all the military industrial complex, the prison industrial complex, you know, and all the things that go with that. Anyway, so besides that, I do wear my heart on my sleeve, a lot of broken hearts around. Um, hopefully they're getting mended. At the prison, I had a bow constrictor because it was always hard for me to take a deep breath. For whatever reason, it was hard. It's very constricting. Um, the chameleon is a person, it is because we all have to adapt to our environment, whatever that is, whether you're an officer or an incarcerated person or whatever. Uh, you have to adapt to or to survive. And then all the windows and time. And I do have a butterfly because there is um, hope for change. And this is ripple effect. This is where I'm getting into cutting wood. I love doing that. and. Um, I want to go more in that direction of um, wood cutting and uh, three-dimensional. And uh, this is jazz notes, jazz impressions. It's also three-dimensional. I had a lot of fun doing this one. And it's three-dimensional, you can see from the sides. I really have fun doing those. And this is, shows how the original sketch and the next where I cut all the wood and then I'm painting it and um, yeah, putting it together and there's the final product. And that's called uh, Jazz Impressions or something. I, I get those two mixed up. But I love, and, and I find that painting is extremely meditative for me. It's really good for my soul. It really just, I get into the zone and it's just <laughs> wonderful. Um, my husband um, uh, started, you know, having definite uh, decline in his health, and so I ended up having to be his caregiver, um, which is fine, and, and I wasn't able to do my three-dimensional pieces anymore. I mean, I had to do, like, smaller pieces, and I had to uh, focus on, you know, focus on him. So, um, yeah. So these are just small paintings, mono prints, maybe working on things I have probably done before, but you know, having fun trying to do. 
These are little small watercolors with acrylic too. And other ones, little windows. Yeah, a temple. My parents did a lot of traveling. This is, this is my daughter. Uh, this is when my husband was in major decline and I needed to work on something to get myself really not, I could work on it maybe an hour a day, maybe two at the most. Took me a long time to do. Um, it was a picture I took of my daughter and she was watching her dad die and it was me because everything I think as an artist that we do is a self-portrait in a little bit of a way. So it was my, my way of watching her and me watch him get sick and, and die. And so at the very end, I, I almost had finished it by the time he was um, passed. And um, I will show the little bird, the little um, fish on the bottom of the painting. I hadn't put it there yet. Mm -hmm. And um, he passed, and he did see it, and he told me it was a beautiful painting, which I was very glad because it, sometimes he wasn't there. He had a lot of mental health issues uh, in the end because of neurological things and strokes and brain bleeds and, and lots of things that um, he, he wasn't himself anymore. But um, he, um, anyway, next. I did a portrait of him because I didn't want to remember him being sick. It is a death portrait because the owl is, in Native cultures, is about passing, transitioning on. Um, he did an incredible rock sculpture garden that I really, I moved tons of rocks with him. Um, and of course the window to another realm because that's where he went off. And um, he loved birds, he loved his lizards in the garden, and he loved modern butterflies. And he was a fabulous artist. Um, I was very lucky. Um, and uh, yeah, so I didn't want um, to remember him as, oh, and then there is a Patrick because nobody's perfect. <laughs> nobody's perfect. And um, he, he, yeah, that was his issue. Um, and this was actually after he passed, also, I just uh, had done a monoprint. I went back and painted it, all these little things because since he had such um, mental problems that I thought, man, our, our, our um, brains are incredible um, that they can be so resilient, but then there's a little, little, little thing that can happen that can totally send it off in another direction. So. I was into the brain. And then I will show you a bunch of slides, um, well, about 10 of them, of um, his sculpture garden. And that's why I can't sell my house in Sonora, because I don't want somebody to come in there and bulldoze it. Um, it was his respite place. It was his place to not be focused on the war or all the things that go on in this painting. He had to focus moving rocks and making sure he didn't smash his hand or his feet. So it was his happy place. And this was the last 12 years, uh, 13 years of his life. Plus, he also had made sculptures that he embedded in here. They're built in, so next. And I did move tons of rocks. And so this is in our house in Sonora. I'm running out the top floor and Otto and family can go to the downstairs if I, yeah, so we can check it out. So I helped do a lot. I mean, I did all the forms for those steps and helped him mix up cement and concrete and move a lot, move a lot of stuff. So, yeah. And it's a lot of weeding. It's not lots of weeding. You know, so every every auto would call me and goes, what are you doing? Weeding, you know, because I can't use Agent Orange because he had been very much exposed to Agent Orange in Vietnam. And I think that's one of the right reasons why he had uh, neurological issues. Next. So, and it's on a hillside, it's beautiful. The south side, you have a beautiful view. A little 
details, lots and lots and lots of little details. And sculptures. Yeah. Lots of details. You can find lots of, and he always wanted to have some like kids go and visit. And, yeah, someday, maybe we can make it into a foundation of some sort. And it was snow. It's pretty cool to see it in the snow. And then I started back at the prison teaching very part time because um, I needed to pay bills. <laughs> and so um, I started back. And, and when they asked me to come back, I said, hell no. I was done. But actually, I'm really grateful I went back because the reason why I started in the first place was because of art. It changes people. It changes their perspective. It changes their lives. It changes so that they don't have all the gang issues. Arts and Corrections was a sanctuary on the yard. When they came in, they didn't have their gang problems. When they left, they had to. It was, but while they're in there, and I've seen it, I, it actually happened where it changed the whole yard. It can be where, it's, where they talk about rocking and rolling. It's not dancing, it's killing each other. And um, that would stop because of the Arts and Corrections programs had such a big impact on people getting along with each other worldwide. You know, so um, we need more arts programs and more funding for it. So, yeah. So, but my supervisor was a jerk. <laughs> and, and you don't want to get on my bad side because I'll do something like that of your portrait. He, he, he was her terrible. He lied, he just, uh, he was terrible. So, I, you know how you have things going on in your brain around and around and around, and you're all uptight? I, I did that. Yeah, it really helps. <laughs> so, and, um, and then Ottawa, I, I had a show of my work and my um, prayer husband's work at the Multicultural Art Center a couple of years after he had passed away. And that's where I met Otto. So Otto and I um, got together and, and uh, next. <laughs> and and uh, we've been uh, together for almost five years and um, it's pretty sweet and I feel very grateful. Um, but these are just little watercolor things because we were going back and forth to uh, New Mexico and Arizona. He was showing me the Southwest. <laughs> this is an orgasm. <laughs> I just had to put it in there. <laughs> started this series. The first one, these are based, and it's a really sad story. This is, this is all the people that died in the ghost ship fire at, uh, in Oakland, California. They were trapped, they were at an event, they were at a music event, um, and they did not have a way out, and a fire happened, and 36 people were burnt up in their smoke and <laughs> It was terrible. And, um, it really got to me because I was I felt my my Sherman was very lucky to have accomplished what he had accomplished in his life. He did a lot. He did a lot of art, he did a lot of sculpture, he did a lot of all sorts of stuff. A lot of these people, there was only one person over forty. They were all young from seventeen to forty. And they lost their lives. And it was um, just really sad. So I started doing the first one was just the cradle look at crayons that I just love. And then I thought, well, I'll do a, do a little bigger one. And it was all their little spheres, their spirits. And so then the, the next one is the one I'm still working on. I have not finished it. We have been doing construction, I have, um, for three years. I had to get my house ready to be 
rented and an apartment put in and then and so I haven't finished it but each person is very special and I've read about each one and, and yeah and, it, and this is six foot by nine foot so that's why I haven't finished it yet and Otto used to come visit me and he goes what I started with a bigger brush and little by little <laughs> I have a hard time not getting detail oriented and so he would come see me and I'm sitting on the, I'm standing on the ladder with this little tiny brush and he goes, What are you doing? You know? Anyway. So and this is my um, I think this is the last one, or almost. Um, this is that painting right there. Um, interconnected realms. So so that you can see my process if you haven't seen it before. Um, and uh, I think we do we have any more? No. Oh, yes, here, coming here. Um, we purchased um, our building on Foch and Mar. It was the old lumber yard. Um, and I, like I said, I prepared my house for renting. I can't let it go because it is a legacy. And um, even though it would be really nice to be able to have that money if I sold it to work on the building. Um, and then we moved here. I moved here. Otto was here right here before I was. And um, I moved here in 2022. And thank you for this lovely, wonderful community. I love it. Um, this area reminds me of Tehran, Iran. And, um, and um, high desert, you know. And uh, so as a military brat, I did move around a lot. It's hard to find roots. But Sonora was my roots for a long time, and now truth or consequences. So thank you so much for coming.